Okay, so how is everyone today? <coughs> okay. So your midterm grades are uh, available. They're, they're, I believe they're in the grade book. The scans are, are available. But your, your quiz grades have not been recalculated yet to reflect the result of the midterm. But, but the, the, the individual results, I believe, are in the grade book now. Uh, so I'll try and get that, the calculation, uh, which, which updates your quiz grade probably tonight. So any, any questions about that? OK. So last time, uh, last time we were talking about uh, polynomial division. And uh, we're still talking about polynomials. One last, uh, one last bit about polynomial division uh, I want to bring up is, uh, so, so uh, there's this notion of a proper fraction. So when you are in the rationals, when you're in the rationals, uh, A over B is proper when what? So can you remember this? Sorry? So this is something from, from grade school. So an example, of, an example of a proper fraction is 3 over 4. That's a proper fraction. Okay, an improper fraction would be something like, say, 15 over 4. 15 over 4 is not proper. So can you, can you remember what the requirement for properness is? Yeah, the denominator is bigger than the numerator. So is proper when? B is more than A. So as an example, uh, you know, fi 5 over 7 is proper. Uh, but uh, say uh, 23 over 4 is improper. Now another another thing that you can do with an improper fraction is that uh, improper fractions can always <coughs> be written <coughs> as the sum of an integer uh, the sum of an integer what am I trying to say and a proper fraction so for example uh, for example, 23 over 4, that's improper. But you can, you, can, um, you can write 23 over 4 as the sum of an integer and a proper fraction. So what integer? 5. Okay, and then what proper fraction? Plus 3 over 4. Okay, so now the, what what relation this has, what relation this has to our <coughs> to, to what we were doing, is that if you were to multiply, uh, the, if you were to multiply both sides of this equation by four, it would read twenty three is four multiplied by five plus three, and then this is exactly the form of 
of the division algorithm that's saying that 23 divided by 4 has quotient 5 quotient and remainder 3 Okay, so this notion of proper and improper uh, is tied directly to the notion of, of quotient and remainder. Uh, polynomials also have this property, ratios of polynomials. So uh, let uh, n of x and d of x be polynomials. Then the fraction n of x divided by d of x is proper when what? It's sort of by analogy to, to this. OK. So now the question is, is, what does that mean? So you said d of x bigger than n of x. And we need something like that. But, we, but you got to be clear about what you mean by, by bigness. Something specific. So do you remember the long, long polynomial long division? How did we check? What was the test for when we should stop the long division procedure? You remember we were, we were building up all that big, the degree, right? So is proper when, is proper when the degree of d of x is greater than the degree of n of x. Otherwise, it's improper. So, for example, how about 4x divided by x squared plus 1? So what's the degree of the numerator? one and the degree of the denominator two. two so is this proper yeah. yeah this is proper how about um how about 3x plus 1 over 4x uh, plus 5 what's the degree of the numerator one and the denominator so is it proper it is not, because to be proper, to be proper, the, the degree of the denominator has to be strictly greater than. So is one more than one? No. It isn't. So this is improper. Okay, and one more, how about five divided by um, x plus eight? What's the? When reckoned as a polynomial, what's the degree of 5? Zero. Degree 0, and then what's the degree of this? Degree 1. So proper? Proper. OK. <clears throat> so any question about, uh, about this notion? So as a result, as a result, we can say, therefore, uh, if you divide, divide uh, n of x by d of x, then you can always obtain, using long division or synthetic division, n of x is equal to uh, d of x multiplied by q of x plus r of x 
That is to say, you, you perform the division, you compute the quotient and the remainder, then now have a look at this equation and now let's, how, how can we get this to show up? Something that we can do to that equation. What do we need to do? How can we get this to show up? Yeah, if we divide both sides of this equation by d of x, that'll force it, that'll force that, that thing to show up. So n of x over d of x is d of x, q of x, plus r of x, and then divided by d of x. Well, we can divide this into there. So if we ignore the r for a minute, can you see that the, that the d of x's would cancel? Okay. Then uh, what would result is this. You would get q of x plus r of x over d of x. So now here's the thing. What this is saying, what this is saying is that every, every improper ratio, every, every improper uh, fraction of polynomials can be expressed as the sum of a polynomial. And then what was the stopping condition for the division algorithm for polynomials? One more time. When the degree of what remains is less than the degree of the divisor. As a result, what must be true about this fraction? This fraction is proper. So this is just like, this is just like up here. In the, in the rational numbers, every improper fraction can be written as the sum of an integer and a proper fraction. And among the, among the rational functions, the ratio of polynomials, every ratio of polynomials can be expressed as the sum of a polynomial and a proper fraction. So let's do that. So how about uh, express four x cubed, uh, minus 3x squared plus 6x uh, plus 2 divided by x minus 2 as the sum of a polynomial and a proper fraction. So in the first place, is this fraction already proper? So it's not already proper uh, because what's the degree of the numerator? Three and the denominator? One. So, so this is not, this isn't proper. Uh, well, so if we, could, if we could compute the quotient in the remainder, of this division, then, then we could answer the question. So we know, we know two styles of dividing polynomials. One of them is long division, and the other, what's the name for the other one? Synthetic division. And of the two, uh, if you have the choice between the two, which one is far preferable? Synthetic is, 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 is far preferable in the sense that it takes far less work. Um, so my question is, so we need to perform division. So in particular, we're going to divide the numerator by the denominator. So we're definitely going to do that. And then now we're going to ask ourselves the question, uh, is, it, is it possible to do synthetic division? So uh, what, are, what are the two requirements? Uh, 
to be able to uh, perform synthetic division. Because you can't, you can't always do it. Yeah. So in the first place, what is the divisor in this exercise? X minus 2. And yes, I agree. The first question is that, is it monic? OK. Well, can you remind me what, what monic means? The leading coefficient is 1. So is the leading coefficient 1? It is. Uh, because it's w that's this is the leading term and its coefficient is one, so yes. Then what's the other requirement besides monic? What was it? But yeah, something about the degree has to be degree one. So is it degree one? Yeah. It is. Now, if instead, by, by way of, of, you know, to, to, to consider an alternate case, if the divisor, uh, if the divisor was, say, um, you know, x cubed plus 5, if, if that was it, then what's the degree of this divisor? three, in this case you couldn't use synthetic division. <coughs> yes, monic and degree one. <coughs> okay, so then then let's do synthetic since that's, that's far preferable. So we're going to do the, the Horner's method, which is also called synthetic division. So who is guarding the door? Two, right? Two, and that's taken from, from that two. And then what gets written on the top row? Four. Negative 3, 6, and 2. OK, then now, uh, you've got to remember the first step. So what's the first step? You've got to bring this one down. right? So the first one always comes down. And then after that, it's easy if you can remember that part, uh, because you now you alternate uh, multiplies and adds. So multiply. Add, multiply, add, <laughs> multiply, add. Okay. So uh, these number, all these various numbers, tell us something. So th this one is notable. What is this one telling us? This is the remainder. And then what is, uh, what, are, what are these numbers representative of? The what? The, co the coefficients of what? The quotient, right? So, so what, what this is telling us, what this is telling us is that 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x plus 2 is equal to x minus 2, that's the divisor multiplied by that quotient, 4x squared plus 5x plus 16. Uh, and then plus 34. So now, is that the answer to the question?
Probably not, because why would I ask that if <laughs> if it was? Okay, but but we're nearly at the answer to the question. How do how do we get to the answer? <laughs> so is this so is it too obvious or too subtle or too boring where, where are we because I'm not getting good response and I'll have to just keep going without your input <laughs> so is this is there any question how we got to here how we got to here, okay? Uh, then, then barring a question about how, is it clear why we got to here? What are we supposed to, so is this the answer to the question? No, it's not. But what do we need to do to get to the answer? What we want is we wanna say this fraction is equal to something. So does does this fraction right here show up in the equa in this equation currently? It's not in the equation currently. But how can we make it show up in this equation? How can we make it show up? Yeah, divide. Divide both sides of the equation by what? By x minus 2. <laughs> so if we do 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x plus 2, and then divide by x minus 2, that would be equal to, uh, well, what, if we do, what, what do you get when you divide this term by x minus 2? You just get the quotient, right? You just get this 4x squared plus 5x plus six, uh, 16. And then plus this term divided by x minus 2 would be 34 over x minus 2. So, so what I want you to see, it says express this fraction as the sum of a polynomial and a proper fraction. So can you see that this is that polynomial and this is the proper fraction? Because what's the degree of the numerator? Yeah. And the degree of the denominator? One. One. And what I want you to I, what I hope you'll see is that this is this is exactly analogous to to to, to me asking uh, how about 100 over 23? Can you can you express that as an integer plus a proper fraction? Okay, so what's the integer part? Four. How many 23s can you take from 100? You can take four of them. And then once you've taken four, what's left? <laughs> Eight pieces are left. And then over 23. This improper fraction is the sum of an integer and a proper fraction. Directly analogous. Okay. So any question about this kind of this kind of thing? Okay. Good. So now we're in the next section. Which is what? Section five point five. Uh 
This is called something like zeros of polynomials. Okay. Uh, let f of x be uh, a polynomial of degree at least one. So constant functions are polynomials, but that's not what that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about lines, parabolas, cubics, things like that. The following are equivalent. equal to C is a zero of F of X. So what does that mean in terms of equations? It means that if you plug in C, what comes out? Zero. So that statement is equivalent to this one. So the point C0 is uh, an x-intercept of y is f of x. So that means that if, if, you, were to, if you were to plot uh, the polynomial f, then you'd notice that there's an intercept at C0. Uh, now, no, notably, this isn't saying anything about the parity. It's not saying that you're going to cross or you're going to bounce off. We're not saying anything about that. It's, but, but it's definitely going to be either a crossing or uh, a, a bounce. OK, three. Uh, X minus C is a factor of f of x. So if, you know, however the polynomial is given to you, if it factored or if it wasn't factored and you were able to factor it, uh, x minus c must be one of the factors. Because after all, a factorization means representing, representing uh, uh, a polynomial as something like x minus c multiplied by x minus uh, a multiplied by x minus b. And if you plug x is c into here, then that would be c minus c. That would be 0. And then you multiply it by all the other factors. It doesn't even matter what they are because you're multiplying by 0. Okay, and here, and this is, this is the, the new part. Not really new, because we talked about it uh, last time, but, but this is what ties all these together, is that uh, the remainder of f of x divided by x minus c is, and then fill in the blank, is what? What's going to be? Well, remember Horner's scheme, H Horner's method. It kind of does double duty. What are the, what are the two things that, that Horner's method does? So on the one thing we call, uh, one name for it, uh, an alternative name for it is synthetic division. So one thing that Horner's method does is divide. But 
what's the other thing that it does? Can you remember the historical purpose for, for even coming up with Horner's method? What was it for? For evaluating. For evaluating. So, so Horner's method does two things. It evaluates a polynomial, and it also computes the quotient of a division and the remainder. So this thing right here, the remainder, is the same as the evaluation at 2. So those two, those two operations are, are identical. So the remainder of x divided by c is what? What do you get if you plug in C? Zero. So I drew it really big so I could make it a smiley face. That's a zero from right there. Okay, so all, so all, all four of these are, are, uh, are equivalent to each other. Okay, so any question about, about this? Okay, so to that end, uh, here I'm going to write a little hidden block. So this, this, would, this, is, this is me being back in my office making y'all an exercise. So I'm going to show you how I make them. Uh, and, and, and then uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll unmake it. You'll solve it. Okay. So I'm going to select a, a negative integer, so I'll select negative 2. And now I need one of y'all to, to tell me a, a, a positive integer. 2? You like 2? OK. And then um, I need another positive integer more than 2. 6. OK. So uh, I chose that one. I let y'all to y'all uh, choose those two. Uh, specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, the polynomial negative 2 multiplied by x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 6 squared. So I'm going to multiply this out and collect like terms. Uh, but what I'd like for you to observe is that, uh, is that what are the zeros of this polynomial? 2 and 6, right? If you plug in 2, you get 0. If you plug in 6, you get 0. So now I'm going to multiply this out and collect like terms. Negative 2, x minus 2, x squared minus 12x plus 36. And if I, if, if I, really, uh, if, if I was really in my office, then I'd be telling a machine to do this. I wouldn't be doing this by hand because uh, it's that's that's prone to error okay so then x cubed minus 12 x squared plus 36 x uh, blah, blah, blah. and then minus 2 x squared plus 24 x uh, and then minus 72. So now I need to collect like terms. So x cubed, and then minus 14x squared, and then 36 plus 24 is 60. minus 72, and then now I can finally distribute that in. Negative 2x cubed plus 28x squared minus 120x plus 144. Okay. So, now here's the question.
given f of x and its plot, factor f of x. Okay, so f of x is uh, negative 2x cubed plus 28x squared minus 120x plus 144. So that's it. Uh, and its plot looks like this. How did I know its plot was going to look that way, by the way? <laughs> so why, why did I know specifically those two points were going to be there? Yeah, because, well, look at those right there. If I plug in 2, I get 0. If I plug in 6, I get 0. How did I know it was going to end up going down if I go far enough to the right? The leading coefficient is negative. How did I know that this one was going to bounce off this 0? I was going to bounce off of it and not end up crossing at 6. The degree of that factor is even. OK. So now, you all saw me do this, but you know, I, I said that it was hidden. So now, so now we can't see it. And what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to factor this polynomial. Okay. So this is a degree, this is a cubic, a degree three polynomial. The only kind of polynomials that you know how to factor, really, are quadratics, degree two polynomials. So you know all kinds of stuff about degree two polynomials. But n not, not any of it applies to this one, because this is a degree 3 polynomial. However, because I gave you the plot, you know uh, you, you, can, you can read the plot and tell me some factors. What's one of the factors? It has to do with this, with this statement, the following are equivalent. A zero is equivalent to an intercept, is equivalent to a factor. So what's one of the factors? X minus two is one of them. So, so this, this right here is saying that X minus two is a factor. Uh, this one is saying what? Yeah, x minus 6 is a factor. So, so as a result, uh, we should be able to divide this polynomial by either one of those factors. And what should the remainder be if we, do, if we perform that division? 0. So let's do it because maybe that'll help us factor. OK, uh, well, I'll divide. So we'll divide uh, f of x by, which one do you want to divide by? OK, we'll do x minus 2. That would have been my choice also, because 2 is smaller than 6. So the arithmetic will be slightly easier. But you could have done 6. It wouldn't have made any difference. So we're, we're going to do that. 
So to perform the division, who's guarding the door? Two. And then what are the coefficients on the top row? Negative 2, 28, yeah, negative 120, and then positive 144. Okay, now, before we do this, before we even get started, I'd like to point out to you that you should be able to tell me right now what's going to end up in that spot. Zero. Zero has to be there. It has to be zero. If you don't get a zero here, then you made a mistake. So then you might say, well, if we already know what's going to be there, if we already know that there's going to be a zero there, why are we doing this? So why are we doing it? For the quotient. Yeah, we're not interested in this bit. We're interested in what's going to be right here. Because we know this one's going to be zero. OK. So carry, this, carry that one down, and then multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add. OK, so did we do it right? We did it right. So that tells us something. That tells us uh, we've, we've partially factored f. What's one of the factors? x minus 2. x minus 2 is one of them. And then what's the other one? Right, it's, it's this bit. Negative 2 x squared plus 24x minus 72. So we were, we were, we've made some progress. We've, we, we, we factored f. Is f completely factored? No, because uh, this, is, uh, this, is a, this, is, this part's not factored. But this now. Uh, we can use um, better techniques because this is a quadratic and we know all about dealing with quadratics now. So now let's factor this part using our previous knowledge. So in the first place, con concerning that quadratic, uh, can you see that there's a, a greatest common factor we could factor out? What could we factor out? We could factor out negative 2. And if we were to factor out negative 2, what would, what would be in here? x squared, and then what? Minus 12x, and then plus 36. And so do, there's, a, there's a, a monic quadratic. Does this one factor? Yeah, how does it factor? Right. So this is uh, x minus 2 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by x minus 6 all squared. And then if I move that coefficient to the front, then it looks like this. And of course it looks like this, right? That's, <laughs> that's, what, we, that's, that's what we wrote on the previous page. Okay. Any question about about this exercise? So what I what I want you to see is that um, this plot gave you a great deal of information. However, if I had if I had uh, just given you this f, and that's all that I gave you, then you wouldn't have known to divide by x minus two. You wouldn't have known where to begin. But once you had a place to begin. Once you were able to get one factor out, then the rest of it, you could work. So now my question to you is, is, is what, what would you do if, if I didn't give you that? How, how, could you, 
How could you proceed anyway? If I gave you just the formula, but not a picture, so that you could find the, find the x-intercepts. So does everybody see the, the challenge? Okay. Uh, another thing I'd like for you to see is that for uh, what one, one aspect of this exercise is that uh, F is a polynomial of, of degree what? Of degree three. And then we performed one step and in a sense kind of, kind of opened up F and then what did we find inside? A polynomial of degree two, right? So what if I gave you a polynomial of degree seven and then you opened up, you know, you did like one step, you'd open it up and what would you see inside? A polynomial of degree six. So this is just like, you know, those Russian nesting dolls, you know what I'm talking about? I still remember when I was little and I saw those for the first time, <laughs> like, whoa, <laughs> you know, but eventually, eventually it, it, it stops, right? The, the nesting dolls. This stops too because once you get down, you know, this is degree two, and then once you open it up one more time, then it's degree one, and then and then you're done. Okay. So, oh, we only have not very much time. So, uh, here here's the the last thing we'll say for today. Uh, this is called the rational. Zeros theorem. So let f of x equal to a n x to n plus dot 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 plus a one x plus a zero. So that is to say, suppose that we have a polynomial. And there is several, several requirements. Uh, in the first place, a n has to be non-zero, the leading coefficient. The constant coefficient has to be not zero, that one. n has to be more than uh, zero. So it has to be at least, it, it can't be a constant polynomial. Uh, and AI are all uh, in Z. So can you remind me what Z is? The integers. Okay, so then we're talking about a polynomial. The leading coefficient is not zero. The constant coefficient is not zero. The degree is at least one and all of the coefficients are integers. Then, the rational zeros if any, because there might not be any, uh, are of the form plus or minus a factor of a zero divided by a factor of a n. So there's 30 seconds, so we can do one. So for example, uh, if we have, say, f of x is 4x cubed uh, plus 2x uh, minus, say, 5. Notice that the leading coefficient is not 0. The constant coefficient is not 0. All of the coefficients are integers. Then the rational zeros, if any, if there are any, must be of the form plus or minus a factor of what goes in the numerator. A factor of 5 divided by a factor of what goes in the denominator? 4. 
So what are the factors of 5? The integer factors. 1 and 5. So plus or minus uh, either 1 or 5 in the numerator. And what are the factors of 4? 1, 2, and 4. So what you have to do is take all possible combinations. So this would be plus or minus. Uh, well, we could do uh, plus or minus 1 over 1, 5 over 1. 1 over 2, 5 over 2. 1 over 4, 5 over 4. So how many possibilities are listed in this list? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12. Why 12? Because it's plus or minus. So I haven't given you the plot, but if there are any rational zeros, it's one of these 12. And so you start guessing. <laughs> and, and that's what we'll do on Wednesday. So have a nice uh, Monday.